So as we begin our lesson on fixed pixel CSS layout, what we're going to take a look at first and foremost is seeing an example of a fixed pixel layout inside of a browser window. Now, as you can see here, I'm on a Mac and I'm on Safari, but this will show up in any browser, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, in the same fashion. My screen resolution happens to be set to 1024 by 768. You may in fact have a higher screen resolution if we believe our statistics and I'll show you where you can go to check that in just a second. But nevertheless, as I mentioned, what we're going to be attempting to create is a fixed pixel CSS layout and it's going to contain a header section, so something up at the top. It's going to contain three columns of information. You can see that two of these columns are smaller and the one in the middle is larger to indicate our main content. These columns on the side could be used for extraneous information, extra stuff, or as you can see, you can even put in some links and stuff inside of there. We'll be discussing how to create these links in a future video tutorial as well. These links, however, could have been created as a horizontal pattern that we could have introduced inside of our head section. However, as we commence, we can see that the three columns that we've created here will also contain a footer section. And this footer section down at the bottom, you know, you don't have to include that in your particular design. However, we will be including it in ours because it's very often that you may in fact wish to create something like a footer in here. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now you might be asking, what's the difference between a fixed pixel layout and a liquid layout? Well, a liquid layout is something that's a little bit more malleable. And when I mean malleable, what I'm trying to say there is, if I were to resize my browser window, as you can see here, and as I'm doing, first of all, you'll notice that if I just move it just a little bit, my content, my web page, is always automatically set in the center of this particular screen. And that's great for us. It's exactly what we want to be doing. However, there are going to be a couple of differences as well because you'll notice that when we squeeze this down what ends up happening is the area in the website does not move and instead what happens is we end up with a scroll bar sorry let me just get back to where we were in just a second ago and we end up with a scroll bar that will um, allow us to you know scroll between content now that's not oftentimes the most desirable effect however do keep in mind that the screen resolution that I'm using right here set to 1024 is sort of like the very basic uh, default the one that that um, the smallest portion of your audience is probably using. The vast majority of your audience probably has a very larger screen resolution as you probably do at home as well. So by the time we finish this, what you're going to be seeing is a centered design, centered website, always inside of things. And it's very often uh, rare that you'll have somebody that's going to be using or looking at your website, you know, at this size or at this size. So a fixed pixel design is oftentimes great for us and it works really well. Some of the advantages of a fixed pixel is that, you know, your text is very much fixed on this area and it doesn't really move in its size. So that sort of avoids having too many words on a line if you had a, an extremely large um, screen resolution on your computer. And um, it's one of the drawbacks of a liquid-based design is that you end up with too many words on a line. However, in a fixed pixel-based design, nothing really changes. Everything's really um, fixed in this area. Now, in a liquid-based design, on the other hand, as I sort of alluded to just a second ago, when I would be moving my uh, window, as you can see here, what would end up happening is the design would actually squeeze in a little bit and the text would actually um, sort of rewrap itself. If that got too small, that wouldn't look very attractive either. If it got too big, again, a little bit of a problematic issue because it, uh, it's not really conducive to good legibility on your website. So, you know, if you want to have a little bit more control, if you want to uh, introduce other images that will 
work really well. Um, it's much easier to do so inside of a fixed pixel based design. It's easier to design for and um, it allows you a little bit more control over how your text looks. However, there are a lot of advantages to a liquid based design and of course we're going to be looking at how to do that as well. So this is what we're going to be doing. Now you might be wondering uh, as we look at this fixel, a fixed pixel based design uh, you can tell that the amount of information that we've included in this website is fitting within the 1024 by 768 framework that I'm using here. So why am I addressing the 1028 by 768? Well, first and foremost, um, I'm doing so because I'm recording this video at this size rather than a larger size. However, um, you might also be wanting to get some information, some statistics about what your audience is going to be using what's the most popular screen resolution that they are in fact using. So I'm just going to go to a website here called Market Share, Net Market Share. And Net Market Share allows you to see usage share statistics for internet technologies. And as you can see, as of April 2010, I do happen to have some statistics opened up here on screen resolutions. Let's take a look. And what we will encounter is that 24% of our audience, almost 25% of our audience, are still using 1024 by 768. The smaller portions, as you can see here, um, account for smaller than 1024, which, again, is really only about like 1% of people are using 800 by 600, and hardly any are using 640 by 480 anymore. That's something that we would see, you know, in the 1990s a lot more when um, monitors were not able to support larger screen resolutions. But now we don't really worry about that so much. So the base screen resolution that we're talking about and looking at is 1024 by 768. There are a lot of people who are using higher than 1024 by 768. Let's look here, uh, 800 by 600, uh, it's only 8.2 percent, right? And if we were to continue looking down here, you'd probably also be able to see, you know, smaller than that. And, you know, these smaller numbers account for a lot less than what you would imagine. Uh, less than 1% at least. So when we think about your audience, a good chunk of your audience is higher than 1024, so fixed pixel design will not have any problems in that environment. Anybody lower than 1024 would incur the scroll bars, but as we saw, you know, it's only like, you know, 2% of people that are lower than 1024. So why do we target a 1024 audience? Because 24% of people are looking at that. What that means is that's the lowest common denominator. If you had a business that did, you know, a million dollars in sales a month, would you want to alienate 24% of your audience? Meaning, if I created a website that was larger than 1024, then 25% of our audience would have to have scroll bars, and that's not something we want to do. So we want to be able to allow 24% of our audience and more to be able to see the entire website. So based on this information, when we go about creating our own fixed pixel design, we will be targeting 1024. However, do keep this in mind. 1024 means the top of my computer screen to the bottom of my computer screen. There's a lot of junk that gets in the way. For example, you know, we got stuff on the top, you've got uh, scroll bars here on the side, and other things like that. So when we go about creating our design, we're actually not going to give it 1024. We're going to make it a little bit smaller on the width, and that width will be set to about 960. So when we come back in the next video, we're going to start doing this inside of Dreamweaver, and we will be targeting 960 for our 1024 audience. And you've seen where you can go get those statistics as you continue in your web design career. Always check back on that because perhaps in five years, 1024 will be inconsequential and nobody's really going to be using it anymore. However, we'll see how that goes and we'll continue in this process until that day arrives. So when we start next video, 
we will be working in Dreamweaver to create our fixed pixel CSS layout.